All right then, ladies and gents, are you ready to continue now? Cause I pity the fool who ain't. Hey. Whatever. For yes, bear. Also, You'll for future reference, for future reference, if you forgot, the team is labeled officially Scorpio Squad. Also, you'll have to excuse my co-commentator, because based off of what we go with in Gear 6, his character may or may not be dead, killed off in a pointless faction. What a shame, what a shame. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? JD. Oh, wow, okay. even even dead forgot okay, about what JD. password yeah. did you use? I, I was though? like, who are you talking about specifically? Well, JD, JD or the other one? Dell. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I portrayed Dell, so I mean. Oh, I thought you were trying to portray Keegan, though. No, 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 no. Well, I am doing Keegan. What I meant is, I go back in the middle. Oh, there, there you go. Now we're actually Stuart calling them the team Kate, Scorpio. There you go. portrayed JD, and I portrayed Dell. And you got an achievement. Oh yeah. Spe speaking of rare achievements, I actually didn't know when we did our Battletoads run what these were. Since then, uh, there was a new video uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, achievements that actually did explain it. So I wasn't even aware of this. Apparently, the rare achievements have nothing to do with you know ranking. Like, like it's not like it's the platinum trophy the equivalent no it's actually rare achievements in xbox games are uh, achievements that very few people have actually gotten yeah similar to the very rare percentage label that some trophies do have in this case we just add the diamond um <laughs> so that basically means that i uh did a lot of shit that few people did uh, in Battletoads. So uh, apparently, it's Battletoads. Okay, there's, it, there's really, really is that little few people that have played Battletoads. It's uh, surprising, on Pedro. It's more common than you think for any game in general because this shit happens also on Steam. For example, he currently plans to have children. Why or oh, why not? Because it's none of your business. Or um, also on games on PlayStation, um, across all systems, mind you, because. People actively set, keep, uh, you know, actively check on what uh, PSM profiles, for example, registers for the profiles, or you know, uh, Steam data on a game. And usually, averagely, only half of people who purchase a product tend to arrive at the end of it. In terms of you know, and because for achievements that are tied to finish the game, or, or at least finish the game once, uh, tend to have a medium percentage of 50%. This is also not counting the weird um, distribution of percentage that uh, um, Sony, not, not necessarily Sony, but probably PSN profiles calculates uh, because on your PlayStation Network account, you can, if you have a PS4 or PS5, even PS Vita, you can check um, on your profile right now. Um, you have the different labels, uh, common, uncommon, <laughs> rare, super rare, and ultra rare. I thought, um, I thought for a second, but as soon as he touched it, it was going to catch fire and burn his hand. Oh, yeah, also I, neat. You can actually uh, upgrade your... Oh my god, this is what I was asking! Mm -hmm. Oh yep. my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, Pedro, why didn't you just tell me when the DLC <laughs> had it? Well, I was saving it as a surprise to you. Oh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, okay, okay, okay. Like I said, if they want to get something, an idea of what to improve for Gear 6, follow this DLC as a roadmap, because I'm already seeing, again, not just, you know, actual improvements in the writing, but quality of life improvements that could work out for the franchise. And the switching honestly. between team members, you know, encourage you also to experiment uh, and choosing a particular team member for a particular you know, fight uh, if things go wrong and you're playing solo. Yeah, I, again, I get the idea this DLC is setting a potential new standard rules. Uh, Hopefully. For I, am future. Definitely, I am definitely seeing why this DLC overall got positive reception. Even if there may be some bumps in the road, it's, um, like I said, this at this great. point, it's, it's, it's already a more enjoyable experience than the main campaign. And like I said, like, well, if this is going to be maybe the framework for Gear 6, maybe they could potentially turn things, into, <laughs> they could potentially turn things around. 
But anyway, what I was saying is, like I said, there are these different labels of a, of a PlayStation trophy uh, in terms of how many people got it. For some reason, PSN Profile as a second type of percentage, which seems to be more general. As in, for example, a Super Rare trophy might be labeled with a higher percentage and be labeled just as rare on that. And it, to this day, I still understand the precise logic where they operate with. Um, because if you scroll, if you check on the PSN, web, PSN Profile website, if you scroll with your mouse on the section of the specific trophies, it will show instead the percentage we showcase instead on PlayStation Network, you know, the, the original one that you can see on your console. So I don't know which of the two is more correct and which of the two in, and why there is this system in the first place. But bottom line, um, this percentage system is good for tracking down how many people have played, you know, until a specific point of the game and how many people decide to do all the, you know, minor, minor stuff, you know, completing, having, getting the platinum and all, you know. Um, but the uh, but, uh, data of it seems to be consistent that a lot of plays, the a lot of players, mostly casual, most likely, don't even finish a game if they buy. So, from what I can gather, this is taking place definitely around the same time that the main campaign of Gears 5 is because we've got the whole robots being controlled by the yeah, swarm. Yeah, it seems to be. The game, no, the game doesn't, uh, at the least that I noticed, give us like a very specific uh, point in the timeline that I could tell. It, it doesn't really matter really because the story is very self-contained anyway. You it's know. it's you still know. between 4 and 5, so there is that. But considering what Jova said of the fact that the DBs are not infected and they hadn't been encountered before, Kate, JD, and Dell encounter them. Yeah, I can see. I can see what Jova says. I really would not actually mind if these characters were added to the main campaign of Gear Six. Like, I mean, look. I mean, it's not like there's a new stunning cast that everyone loves or would feel you'd be taking the spotlight away from if you included these guys. In. But Jova, oh, wait, Jova. What you're yeah. saying is the Gears Four Five casts are basically. The sequel trilogy, whereas these guys are the Mandalorian cast. Well, yeah, basically, that's, that's basically that's pretty much what we've been saying. Yeah. But well, oh, okay, 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 okay. I do see what Dead means. So now that we're actually introducing these characters, yeah, I guess we could consider them the Mandalorian to the main line in this regard. It's like again, it's something that breathes new good breath. It breathes a new good fresh breath of air into the mix, honestly, and I wouldn't mind seeing these guys interact with the main action here and there. But Jova, we need to finish uh, Kate's quest to defeat Queen Rain. Can we have both of <laughs> Of course we can, Teo. I'm just uh, uh, saying what... Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm still... I'm still I would love that to happen, Jova. I just am skeptical that will happen because I don't want mm. to be get myself hopeful and get disappointed. I definitely get what you mean. Like, I mean, again, this is a mass improve. This is a mass improvement. Although there's always a chance that they're only legit just doing this for the DLC for some baffling reason. Now, again, if they're smart, they'll take the fact that this is probably the most positive anything regarding Gears Five has been, and you know, at the very least, take notes. Mm -hmm. I mean. And, uh, and like Pedro said, the fact that a lot of this stuff happened when we got a new lead, a new writer and whatnot. Well, it's and... not necessarily just a new writer, it's simply they imported the one from the comic here. We don't even know if the guy is going to be consistent or if he just did it for the sake of consistency. Yeah, consistent that's, right. that, 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 that's, that, that's where my skepticism comes from, Jova. Uh, as, far as, I, as far as we can tell from what they've told us, he seems to be just a guest writer for this DLC. Uh, and I have a very... Very strong fear that Tom Biss will be back for Gear Six, so I'm oh, not. In, I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm not all that. I, I don't want to get disappointed, so I'm gonna remain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like when I said new writer, I didn't mean new permanent writer, but just a different writer in particular in any shape or context. Sure, sure, sure. I don't. I mean, it, it, Rod Ferguson left, but I am doubtful because remember, Tom Bessler has been associated. What was already associated with the series even before the Microsoft buyout. So Tom. So it seems like so Tom Bessler is at this point a Gears of War veteran. 
So I'm not entirely sure if the coalition is willing to just part I'm ways not, with him. Yeah, not just that. I'm not entirely sure both neither Microsoft nor the coalition want to take a gamble and hire a complete new different writer for what they consider, you know, the, the third chapter in the new trilogy that they're doing. I mean, it could it could happen. That's what Disney no, it did. Could, it, so. it could happen, but it's yeah. still a, it's still a risky move in the first place. Like. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. There is precedent for that to possibly happen because if there's one thing I've seen with a lot of companies, don't matter how much it, it makes, it doesn't matter how oh little God. sense it makes, if they are desperate enough to try and get audience that they lost with a real stinker back, they will bend over backwards. Case in Jova. point, Disney. Yeah. I, ju I just realized it. In, in Gear 6, they're going to ship Kate and Foz. Why? I don't know. If 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 Rise of Skywalker can do it, why can't we? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Well, for as much as I absolutely hated Rise of Skywalker, the whole Ray and Kylo Ren thing was sadly something that was sort of set up by Last Jedi, idiotic as that was. So honestly, it wasn't... you asked me, Joe, it was set up already from Episode Seven. I get, like you said, I only, yeah. I only, or I was hoping they were instead going to treat it more like as a brother sister relationship. But no. Wait, wait, honestly, I never saw really any hinting that those things had some romance stuff going on in episode seven. Final right? battle, Jova. It's it's it, it, the, if you see that second, trying... if you see a second uh, time, you can see a bit of sexual tension. Yeah, sexual tension as they try to kill one another. But okay, okay, okay. Look, uh, regardless, though, at the very least, it didn't feel like it came out of nowhere. It didn't change the fact that it sucked. But at least I could sort of see where it was coming from. Having Kate be shipped with Foz would be absolutely legit out of nowhere. And what would even be the bonding thing? Oh, we both knew JD or Dell, someone who died. Hey, let's bang over that. Hey, hey, Jova, Jova, Jova. It's it's just like how um how uh um God, what's her name? She's so bland, I forget her name. The um, the taxi driver from La from Legend of Korra. What's her name? Azami. Azami, that's it. Azami and Mako bonded over both having dead parents. So... I feel, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, I thought they were already in a relationship before. Then. Well, remember, well, remember, when they first meet and they start hanging out, they bond over the fact that both of them had their parents, uh, or at the very least yeah. one of them killed, in, in Azami's case. <laughs> so... Um, so, who knows? <laughs> Who knows indeed. But yeah, uh, I mean, okay, yeah, legit. I am enjoying this DLC. The gameplay has improvements. Again, much more banter between the characters. Like, okay, okay, okay. For as much as we can attribute this to being a writer from the comics, the fact that he actually, you know, has the characters trading more dialogue between each other in between stuff is, again, something oh. that harkens back to the to old... To the Batcave! <laughs> 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 Quirky. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's like the Crystal Tower. No, Jova. If it was the Crystal Tower, you would not be able. You would not have all to save. True. It's baffling a move as that was, but yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, like I said, though. I mean, again. While we could attribute some of the writing just being the fact that he's from the comics, which haven't had executive managed to deal with. The guy does seem to be writing in a style more reminiscent of the old Gears games without making it feel like nostalgia pandering. Like We still yeah. have some elements uh, that are clearly, you know, integrated from this new um, the, the sequel, you know, series like Mac expressing, uh, you know, proper disdain for the COG government. Uh, um, similarly to what Reyna and, um, and Kate's group, uh, you know, expressed. Uh, um, but it's again fair, of... fair enough. Go on, sorry, Joe. Yeah, um, that's a good point. This sort of stuff I'm more okay with. Like, well, the idea of the COG government over the years sort of losing its way, mind you, not the actual characters that were in there, but the government and the and the organization itself losing its way to the point where old old and new characters have to come back together to get it to reclaim its spirit. I would not have minded that. That's actually not a bad idea. It harkens back to stuff like the good The Mask of Zorro movie, which is essentially a passing of a torch film. 
Like, yeah, for most kids who don't know that nowadays, Antonio Banderas' character was somebody who was inheriting the mantle of Zoro. He wasn't immediately Zoro himself, which, you know, a lot of people just see him as Zoro these days. Um, was, uh, remember, was, was Anthony Hopkins the guy yeah. during the torch passing? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he, he played the old classic Zoro. You got it, you go. Diego. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I grew yeah. up. Isn't that 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 that's 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 kind of funny. Basically, they a well sorrow. Yeah, they kind of sort of pulled us. Oh yeah, shit! Problem with that? Anyway, you were saying to you. Oh, you got a problem with that? Oh, sorry. If I thought I thought you were saying something. Whatever. I mean, oh, whatever. The no, 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 no. Go on. I mean, Tia was trying to say something, but uh, it is a bit interesting. Is, is the character who Hopkins was playing, um, wasn't yeah. he, uh, wasn't he Mexican? The character was Mexican. Mexican, Spanish, yes. No, that's also the thing, Gleaves. They also pulled something slightly akin to the first Mission Impossible by having, you know, the, the protagonist of the actual TV series and, you know, the original story. The one I actually did grow up with, I actually did grow up with the classic old TV series. Essentially, having to pass the torch, torch and dying kind of horribly. Well, I mean, I mean I, I, well, that's the thing. Um, with Zoro, at least it was a uh, it was a transition from a noble sacrifice. <laughs> in, Mission, in Mission Impossible, the guy turned out to be evil. Yeah, like okay, okay, okay. Look, I'll needless say to this, say, that pissed off fans of the TV show. In the like, meantime, this is why I say yeah. that. The in the meantime, no, Dwayne was no. trying to activate the console, but only Keegan can, because he's only he's the one who has the. Not just that, you mentioned that it's offline, so I guess we have to reactivate the electricity. Oh, which is what Mac is capable of. Again, it neat uh, the way we record. They had to. That's a, that, that's the thing. Look, because remember, I remember Dell barely does anything, uh, despite being the tech guy. Uh, whereas Mac actually does something. I remember, and remember, yeah, again, uh, the, the writer did just wrote the plot, uh, you know? So, but uh, this, I get the, I get that some of these ideas, uh, you know, the upgrade system and the, um, and the actual, you know, interaction between the team, the specializations and everything, were probably ideas from the actual development team. Oh well, yeah, remember, yeah. remember, Taylor, the, the development team was slightly restructured after the failure of the main campaign. So. But seriously though, I mean, cool. I cannot stress enough how much it does make the, the party actually feel like an actual unit. And if you have everyone playing as the characters, well then, all the more to that teamwork feeling. And again, brings back that good old sense of brotherhood we've been missing here. Like, I've also noticed that enemy from before as a sort of a new unit, which is kind of like a bo one of the boomers from the original trilogy, but with a freezing gun of all things. But yeah, I mean, look, I mean, okay, let's honestly think back to Gears 5, honestly. We never really saw characters in-game do stuff that was really specific to them in no. that regard. It, it made them feel homogenous and in the worst way possible. Well, the, okay, okay, this, in t strictly in terms of gameplay, Jova, this was a thing also for the original trilogy, which is the thing that I did notice uh, um, well, as, as well. What it's... they managed to dif what managed to differentiate the character was the way they talked, uh, you know, the, their personality that they had, uh, you know. Oh, don't oh, get me wrong, too. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong, too. I acknowledge that the original trilogy was guilty of this as well. But the thing is, that was the original trilogy. Back when, you know, cover-based shooters were arguably a more newer thing. Like, let's not forget, Gears was the thing that maybe not pioneered, but it absolutely revolutionized the cover-based shooter. Mm -hmm. So, it's understandable that they may not have had all the cool bells and whistles that we expect nowadays. I'm torching more on Gears 4 and 5 because by then they should have done stuff to evolve, but it felt more like steps back. I mean, it didn't help that the characters themselves weren't exactly that highbrow either. Whereas this DLC here feels like that evolution that this series has been needing, that fans have craved, while also again giving each of the player characters their own unique and diverse personalities. Not just in the story, but in the gameplay. And it really just feels like you need them all to work together. Just, without just being too of, intrusive. I just wish one of those personalities would just shut up. I mean, again, I'm not really that annoyed by Mac, but maybe it's a thing you notice more when you're playing the game and not talking over it, I guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as, as, as me and Pedro got, 
As me and Pedro got further into it, the more Max started whining, the more I was getting annoyed. It's because okay. it, like, it, like, mate, it's it's a war for fuck's sake. Of course you're gonna see. It's because like it, they, I, I get it. I get it. Mac is a civilian who got uh, dragged into this. I get that. So he he's not as trained as the others. I get that. But I, I, I so I, so I can uh, handle some of it. I just I just think they go overboard with it sometimes when it comes to the again. And Yak Jova said, yeah, the thing is we're talking about over a lot of banter because there's a lot because the Mac keeps uh, constantly. Uh, whining about everything as we go. Oh, along. I do notice that. Like uh, it's one yeah. of those. It's one of those cases where I can understand some of the whining. It's just that the the game does do a bit too much of it. It it, it, gets, it gets to a point where like uh, uh, it, your patience might start running thin depending on your level of tolerance. I have noticed some of the whining, but I guess so far the way I've seen it, it it, it, does, it doesn't feel like it's gone overboard yet. So where did it feel like it was starting to go overboard for you guys? Well, for me, it was uh, around, I think... The further we got into this level. The further we... yeah. I think it's like in the next part where I also started to say something like uh, that, yeah. To do also, it. Like I said, that, Sorry, that may be a factor later down the line, but I still actually do like these characters so far. And mind you, granted, I'm not saying that that's my final judgment on them. Maybe the story will do something stupid with them. Actually, do you feel like the story does any atrocities with no, the no, 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 like I said, the only issue I have with the story is that is the pacing feels very rushed. When, when we get to the final act of this of this DLC, suddenly the character development goes full speed um, and gets to a place where, okay, I get what you're doing, but you should have had a bit more build up before this. Like, uh... I didn't think it was worth it because it is just DLC. I can uh, I can or really answer. Like Pedro said, we did not have enough it's time because, to be able to condense. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I get that. I, I, I just feel like, um, okay, this is an origin I story, so I don't know how the comics are. Uh, it's just one of those cases where, I feel like later on, when the characters are uh, the characters are going to go, uh, like the the characters go from being somewhat strangers to being super duper uh, brothers at the hip thing a bit too quickly. Like there's a bit too much of an abrupt change on my end when we get to the final what? act of this. One thing I actually have noticed is like, well, for DLC, and mind you, I'm not saying that this is amazing, but this DLC does actually feel pretty ambitious. Like, you know, mm -hmm. again, for a thing that's a DLC, the story does feel like something that could pretty much, you know, foundate its own entire game. The characters oh, sure. have gotten a good amount of the uh, drawing oh, on so far as well. Oh, sure. Well. I, would have like, much, I, I would have much preferred a full game based on this concept so they could properly flesh out and have much more buildup. I wonder um, if maybe originally this was supposed to be a smaller project, but along the way things grew and grew until they sort of lost control of how much it was growing, and that's why the last bit, as you just or said, may had to Or maybe, much. also another theory, Jova, maybe this DLC was supposed to be released relatively earlier, but they wanted to, for one reason or another, they took instead time, and that gave an excuse to, you know, refine it. That I don't know. Remember, it, it only got attached to Wave 5, I think, for the multiplayer, which was way, way down the line. I'll just say this though the differences in quality between this and the main campaign of Gears 5 are even then Jekyll and Hyde. Not to mention the 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 rise in quality of, of this DLC in comparison to the main campaign proves what I've been preaching since we started commentating on this series. If you want to make more Gears games, just adapt stuff from the comics. Don't continue a story that doesn't need to be continued. And by that, we're talking about the Locust War. Well, okay, technically, High Busters does have to do with the Locust, but... Oh! Yes, but no, it's, a, it's It's more of an unfortunate, you know, circumstance because it's attached yeah. to the Tugas Warm. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, oh, well, oh, wait, 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 actually, that does give me an idea, though. If High Busters had been a thing about, like, again, another species, yeah, this could have worked. We could have had the whole thing about how the government has become a bit complacent. I mean, it wouldn't even be the peace and may have lost its way, but then we have to write ourselves up when a new, bigger, and even badder foe comes about. Without a thing like this. Oh, yeah. Also, also regarding the the um, the relationship between the characters, again, as someone who actually hasn't read the, the comic line and he's only seen the the DLC in action for the first or the first time in this. Uh, Notice how. I, um, Dwez got knocked down, but I shot the last enemy, and as a result, because when you kill all enemies in an area, uh -oh. 
Well, in fact, in the previous. I think it's now actually. Hold on. That he says something. But, yeah. yeah, I think it's after this door opens. Uh huh. I think we should take her advice. <laughs> Funny. No. Stating the obvious, then. Well, I was about to mention. Okay, regarding the the character interaction, again. Just from first impression on, I kind of get the idea that these characters have already some sort of camaraderie from the first when we see them. All right. Me too. Like, it does feel like they have known each other long enough that they can trust each other well enough. Or at uh, least they have to. All right. See you for the next yeah. part, everybody. Yeah. See ya. Yeah.